So if we start many view, we have wondered what has happened to the biggest, perhaps one of the longest running social protection program of country, Pantawid Familia. We have heard a story or two about the program. What we present today is a story based on an analysis of data gathered uh, between November 17 to February 2018, according to an evaluation design. This is the third of the series of impact evaluations of the program. The first one is done in 2011, the second in 2013. Uh, while these studies had been presented uh, internally to technical working groups uh, consisting of representatives from these WD, PIDS, and donor agencies like the World Bank, ADP, and UNICEF, this is the first time this has been presented publicly. We would like to mention too that uh, WSD the primary data collection. Uh, the three of us have been working under a guidance of a technical working group uh, mentioned already, and that group also included uh, Dr. Uh, Vic Pacheo and Dr. Sergio Reyes of the uh, Philippine Institute for Development Studies. If you haven't noticed yet, the URLs are given in the invitation if you are interested in the full text. Uh, next presentation uh, covers three papers. Uh, the main study is the regression discontinuity design. Uh, and uh, which is the primary impact evaluation covering the short or medium term impact of the program. Second is the qualitative study, which looks deeper into the results of the RDD study. A qualitative study is usually done when there are controversial results, quote unquote. Here we go back to do a qualitative study to find some explanations for portions of the RDD report that can be explained by the quantitative analysis. The third paper uh, we called RCT court studies is a companion study to, our, to the RDD analysis to exploit the randomized treatment assignment in the first wave to answer longer term impacts on the program. We uh, thought that uh, the three uh, studies uh, uh, together will be able to explain the, what happened to the program better. Uh, this is the outline. Uh, I'll first provide you a big background, continue on with methods and, and the findings, and end with the recommendations. Uh, for the program overview, those who have not heard of the program uh, uh, or are not familiar with the program, this graph encapsulates what the program is supposed to do. The program, the four piece aims to break the intergenerational cycle of poverty, that is, uh, Low-income families will have children who have, will not have received proper education and health services, and when these children become adults, they will have low human and, and social capital and become either unemployed or get low-paying jobs and become parents of low-income families, and the cycle goes on. The program aims to break the cycle of, of poverty uh, by encouraging poor households to invest in health and education of children, that is, keep the children in school and 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 healthy so that uh, they will have uh, better human capital and have better paying jobs and not become parents of low income families. This is the program theory. Uh, in a nutshell, the theory says that the program pays cash grants to encourage or incentivize for beneficiary households as well as monitor their compliance to conditions on health, education, and family development. Conditions include like attending 85% of classes of education, Pregnant mothers visiting clinics for two months every two months. Mothers bringing their children to clinics every two months, uh, and attending uh, the monthly family development session. Compliance to these conditions means that increased utilization of health, higher educational participation, and better parenting. This in turn will result in better education and health outcomes of children and mothers, and these children will grow to become productive adults that will have higher income and thereby break the cycle of poverty. Uh, this is the uh, wave one finding summarizing, and, and it's done by uh, using a randomized control trial, uh, assigning uh, household randomly between treatment and control. Uh, here, both the treatment group and the control group are eligible households. Data collection was done in 2011. The result uh, says that there's an increase in enrollment among children 3 to 11 years old and increase in school attendance as well for children 6 to 17 years old. Severe stunting was reduced by 10 percentage point uh, and uh, encouraged mothers to avail of maternal health care services. Child, uh, children take vitamin E, uh, did, uh, take uh, deworming pills, and, and did regular weight monitoring. Beneficiaries also spend more on health and education and less on buys and goods. 
So contrary to the common notion, there's just no evidence that the adults beneficiary work less or made less effort in finding work. The second wave uh, studies is, is, is summarized by this. this, this by time, uh, this is done in 2013. By this time, the program has covered almost all areas of the country with beneficiaries nearing 4 million. So it was no longer possible to implement a randomized control trial. So the next best method used was regression discontinuity design uh, where the control group are non eligible. The main results are the program keeps uh, older children in school uh, and uh, gross enrollment rates of children 12 to 15 all is higher for purpose children. Uh, the, the vitamin A take up and iron supplements in the warming fields all are all higher for uh, purpose children. The program promotes facility based services and, and access to professional postnatal care. The program also contributes to reducing hours of child labor among poor children. Okay, so let me now go to the research design and and, 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 and starting with the uh, regression discontinuity, discontinuity design, the, the main step, uh, method of the main study. The objective of the evaluation is to reassess the program impact in the short term and immediate term, like in wave two, the program uh, in 2017 has already covered most of the poor households. It was no longer possible to do a randomized control trial. Uh, by the nature of the design, it requires a substantially larger sample size uh, than an RCT. To have a sufficient power for uh, most major outcomes, it needed approximately 7,000 households uh, in, in the near private threshold. We allocated this uh, 7,000 household in the 30 city and uh, city and municipalities nationwide. Data collection was done in November 2017 to uh, February 2018. Okay, so let me try to explain RDD in simple terms so we can have a good perspective of its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, suppose this is your target population. Uh, if you can arrange the population using a variable called the running variable, which in our case is the pro proximity test scores, uh, a measure of income, should, and if you can define an eligibility threshold that separates the beneficiaries from and non-beneficiaries like a vertical line. And finally, if your outcome of interest does not jump like the green line uh, in the threshold, then you have satisfied the RDT. So long as you limit yourself to a band like the one in shaded form, you are you are in good, uh, uh, you are on your way on doing a good uh, impact evaluation. This is what RDD is all about. But uh, suppose after evaluation, after uh, after treatment, you observe that the beneficiary has some changes, causing you to observe a jump in, in the outcomes of the interest of the threshold. The difference in the outcomes between the beneficiary you go below the threshold and non-beneficiary above the threshold is the impact on the program. That is the RDD in a nutshell. Uh, it highlights its weaknesses. It has strong internal validity as if it's randomly assigned, but it has at the same time also highlights a weakness, which is it, the results pertains only to the observations near the eligibility threshold or the shaded area. Okay, so that's RD. Uh, the next study, uh, the RCT court analysis uh, design uh, exploits the RCT assignment in wave one to, to study the longer term effects of the program. The wave one uh, RCT withhold treatment of control groups by about 18 months. We call it the lacking effects because timely provision of Panta with Familia benefits that includes time critical inputs in a child's life are likely to have a larger effect when provided during a specific period than if provided outside that period. Think of nutrition or immunization as an example of time critical inputs. Uh, this study needed 2,500 households drawn from the original treatment and control barangay in Wing Ban. Um, uh, so this household also needs to have specific children born in specific periods. Okay, so in estimating the impact, uh, this figures tries to illustrate this, children and or mothers in treatment areas are presumed to have received the program benefits uh, within the critical period, while children in the control periods, because they are, uh, they are not participants during that critical period, will receive it uh, outside of the critical period. After several years, you can measure the impact of that uh, difference in, in, in receipt of, of critical in inputs uh, in terms of the nutrition, health, education outcomes, as well as uh, uh, between treatment and control households. The hypothesis is that the children who receive the program benefits at the right time will have better outcomes compared to children who have received 
benefits outside of the critical period. Now, turning now to the qualitative study, if I, we, we, as I have said, the, the qualitative study designed to gain additional insights to explain select uh, controversial results of, quote unquote, of the RDD study. We actually particularly look at uh, issues of nutrition, as you will see later, and maternal health care and labor outcomes. Uh, we use FGD and KIs uh, with program stakeholders uh, to do this study and thematic analysis of the interview results were conducted. So the qualitative, uh, the primary data collection of the qualitative study includes FGDs, uh, where program beneficiaries are asked to gain insights on their knowledge, attitudes, and practices on topics of material health and child health. Key informant interviews uh, with program stakeholders were also used to record their experiences about the program implementation and beneficiary behavior. Okay, so we are now ready for the results. So, uh, and the results are presented by broad themes. So the, 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 we start with the reproductive health uh, and um, reproductive and maternal health. Okay, so here is the, uh, before I present these results, I'd like to explain to you the, the scheme of the presentation, uh, which to make us understand. There are always two bars comparing Pantawid and non-Pantawid households. In addition, in each of the bar, there are two results. Uh, one is the sharp RD results where we assume that the eligible got Pantawid benefits represented by the shaded bars. And the other one is the fuzzy RD where we adjust for the presence of wrongly assigned observation units, i.e. Uh, eligible getting, uh, not, eligible not getting benefits and non-eligible getting benefits. Our friend, uh, David Rachel from ADB, who is actually one of the discussants, has recommended that we present both. Uh, so this is presented here. And this is represented by the outline bar, not the shaded bar. So there, there's an outline bar and a shaded bar uh, uh, representing both the uh, sharp RD and uh, passive RD results. Okay, in case of the sharp R, uh, uh, RD results, when the bars are shaded dark, this means that the difference between Pantawid and non-Pantawid outcomes are statistically significant. If the if the light shaded, this means that the difference is not statistically significant. For fuzzy RD, if the line is solid, this is implied as statistically significant results. And if the line is broken, this this signifies that the results are not statistically significant. Okay, now that you have an idea of what the bars rep, uh, the bars represents, let us go to the results. First. Uh, uh, here, you see that the program is shown to encourage trial use of modern family planning methods by 5 to 7 percentage points compared, uh, pairing non -panta with, uh, compared to non-Panta with beneficiaries. Notice that the, 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 bar, the bar is dark shaded, so it's significant, it's statistically significant. But on the right-hand side, uh, uh, also the fuzzy RD is, is, is continuous lines, so the fuzzy RD is also significant. But sustained use uh, on the right, on the right, the figure on the right, is not statistically significant. It is lightly shaded, and the same thing for fuzzy; it's also broken. So the lack of sustained use may be due to access issues like availability of supply or capacity to buy, and experience during the trial use, uh, uh, like the satisfaction with the method, health concerns, and side effects. Uh, for prenatal care. Uh, there's no significant difference in the pre prenatal care checkup at, 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 at least once, but we find a positive significant impact of uh, an increase of 12 percentage points on availability of prenatal care uh, checkup at least four times in the daily uh, in the duration of the pregnancy. This is the recommended uh, frequency by by uh, DOH. This is a welcome result because they recommend uh, because uh, subset is recommended by DOH. Uh, the Pantawid Familia only requires uh, one visit per semester or three visits. So this is more than what's required by the program. This is an improvement. This improvement is maybe because of the reinforcement of the FDS. Uh, for postnatal care, we find no impact on the availability of uh, within 24 hours as well as within 72 hours. This finding seems to indicate that there is an unequal appreciation among the beneficiaries of the value of postnatal care relative to prenatal care, even though both are required by the program. Uh, the, in the qualitative study, this, the difference in prenatal and postnatal care is one of the issues that we wanted to, to go back and check. 
uh, using qualitative methods. We find that both uh, pantawid and non-pantawid mothers are aware of the importance of an antenatal and, and postnatal care. However, uh, awareness on the antenatal care is higher compared to postnatal care. In some interviews, participants neglect to mention postnatal checkups for mothers when they ask about proper health care practices after pregnancy. We also find high compliance in observed uh, attendance in antenatal care checkup for both groups, but inconsistent compliance in the case of postnatal checkup. So there is this result, the result in quantitative studies, it seems to be borne out by the uh, social, uh, uh, the qualitative study where there is a, an even knowledge between awareness in antenatal and postnatal checkups. In terms of birth attendance, uh, for skilled birth attendance, there's no impact on overall skilled birth attendance. But however, the attendance by a doctor among beneficiaries is 10% point, percentage point higher compared to non-beneficiaries. The results may indicate a shift in the preference towards doctor-assisted deliveries among beneficiary mothers or change in preference of the beneficiaries for small to bigger uh, health facilities where it is more likely that a doctor is available. Uh, now let's turn to child health and nutrition. Uh, uh, for weight monitoring, next slide, uh, regular monitoring Regular weight monitoring, which is once a month, uh, according to the program, among children zero to two years old is higher among beneficiaries by up to 15 percentage points. Regular weight monitoring, which is once uh, once every two months among children two to five years old, is higher among beneficiaries as, as, as well by nine to 12 percentage points. It should be highlighted that despite the positive impact on the program, uh, on weight monitoring, as we can see here, the proportions are exceptionally low for both groups. What, uh, weight monitoring every two months is a condition for children two to five years old. And we see that uh, the, the, pro the proportions of doing this are, very, are, are quite low, even if it's a, if it's a condition of the program. So the low proportions may be due to one, lack of awareness of its value and importance, and two, access or supply issues or a program failing to monitor children. Uh, the qualitative study revealed that the four piece actually bring the children to because of the conditionality. But you see here that the proportion is still small. So in terms of vitamin A, uh, there's a high intake uh, among beneficiaries six to six months to six years old. This result is consistent with the previous uh, IEs uh, uh, impact evaluations. There is no discernible impact on complete immunization, however, for 12 to eight months. This result has been consistent throughout uh, three waves of the evaluation. The qualitative study revealed that there is an equal access to vitamin uh, supplementation for four piece and non four piece. Vitamin A is administered house to house or at the health center. Daily vitamin supplements are originally brought, bought by parents due to limited supply and health facility. There appears to be no difference between four piece and non four piece in terms of attitudes towards immunization. The respondents are aware of the importance of immunization and follow the immunization schedule of health, of health centers. It was, however, found that the provision of immunization services is lower in rural areas. Now, going to the warming, in the case, uh, a positive impact is observed on receiving the warming pills at least once, uh, at least twice, by eight to uh, 10 percentage points with higher proportion uh, for Pantawid Familia. However, we see that there is no statistically significant difference for the warming at least once for six to 14 years old. and. Uh, and uh, perhaps the explanation is that it's the 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 proportion that does doing one one uh, warming once is, is 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 quite high. So the qualitative study revealed that the most parents allow their child to be administered with the warming pill, and uh, some fears and misconception are are still there uh, in some areas. Uh, it was found that the warming is provided by all health facilities visit, visited by this by this study. Next, uh, we have uh, uh, results on, on the dietary practice. There is a higher likelihood of being fed vegetables, uh, eight to 10 percentage points among Pantawi beneficiaries, but there is no significant impact on exclusive uh, breastfeeding. This result suggests that nutrition outcomes observed are not due to current uh, uh, dietary practice, but maybe due to past practices and other practices that accumulated. The qualitative study reveals that there is no 
consensus on breastfeeding information. Although many of the interview participants stress the importance of bre breastfeeding, there is no consensus on the appropriate period of exclusive breastfeeding and the timing of introduction of other foods. Parents may need, are knowledgeable about proper feeding practices and importance of nutrition of young children as found out in the qualitative study. Now, uh, let's go to the anthropometric results. Uh, in terms of being underweight and wasting, there is no significant impact on the likelihood of being underweight and incidence of wasting. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, the, in terms of stunting, there appears to be a higher prevalence of stunting among pantaweed children by 5 to 7 percentage points. And in addition, there's also a higher prevalence of severe stunting by 5 to 6 percentage points among uh, pantaweed children six, below 6 years old. This result is surprising because in wave 2, uh, we found no impact on nutrition. And even in wave 1, there was even a significant reduction in stunting among pantaweed children by about 10 percentage points. So, uh, okay, so we will try to qualify these results by what, what we found in the court study. The court study, however, shows that uh, uh, a 2.9 percentage points reduction in the likelihood of being severely underweight among children uh, in the treatment group. Uh, in addition, there's no impact on nutrition outcomes, uh, although the rates are lower in treatment than compared, compared to control. The results on nutrition comes to show that the receipt of the program input during the first 1,000 days results in better nutrition outcomes among children, counteracting the, the, the results of the RDD. Now, in additionally, you, the RC uh, study also, cohort study, finds that uh, there's a lower incidence of diarrhea by, by three or mobility incidence by 3.1 percentage points and fever by 4.5 percentage points. So there's no uh, uh, impact on the incidence of cup and, and vaccines and preventable diseases. Okay, uh, turning to the qualitative study, the qualitative study finds that only a small proportion of respondents reported that their children are targeted for feeding programs due to inadequate nutrition status. Uh, most feeding programs are conducted uh, by the daycare center and cover the whole class. So there's no targeted uh, uh, program. Uh, the health facility visits for growth monitoring usually ends with a collection of weight and height uh, of the child. This also found that there's a very low awareness of the first 1,000 days program for both four piece and then four piece program. Only one municipality from those we visited discussed uh, said that the, the that the first 1,000 days program was discussed in the PBS. Now here's the supply side condition that we we found that, that the, uh, we found that the health facilities were reported to be convenient access to for respondents in terms of cost and distance, which is a this is a nice thing to hear. But the respondents often express satisfaction also as well when asked about their overall opinion about the health facilities of the community. However, besides some issues are uh, faced when uh, when uh, when you ask more questions because the government. Uh, health facilities and in government hospitals are, are, are affordable if not, if not free of charge. The health facilities reported, however, uh, shown to be understaffed as shown here by the ratios of target ratio of the doctors, one to 20,000, you have one to 30,000, nurse, and so on and so forth, that you have uh, the below the, uh, uh, a, a very high the, the ideal ratios that is, is, is that's desired, uh, indicating no staffing, uh, understaffing of, of of most of the facilities. Okay, we can now turn to child uh, to education and child labor. Uh, in, in case of enrollment, uh, we've shown here that there's no statistical significant difference for enrollment in younger ages. It's also notable that this uh, there is a relatively low enrollment for three to five years old. This has been going on that uh, 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 in the survey, the, mother, the mothers or guardians are asked why the children three to five years old were not enrolled, and majority of the respondents reported uh, to their mind, child is too young or unprepared to go to school. Uh, for six to s 11 years old, uh, we also did not find a, a, a significant impact. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, but uh, the, this is just less worrisome as compared to three to five years old because this, the enrollment rate here is already at almost universal at 98%. So there's, there's not, so uh, it will be very difficult to find difference at that level of, of, 
school attendance. But at 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 uh, at higher at, at with older children, 12 to 17 years old, we see a positive impact on enrollment rates for uh, uh, with uh, about uh, four uh, 4.5 percentage points higher. And the results indicate that the expansion of the program to cover older children has translated to increased utilization of education services for older children. And uh, for age appropriate uh, enrollment, uh, we also didn't find significant uh, impact on, on uh, uh, three to five years old and six to seven years old. And uh, next slide, please. And you, uh, but you have you found uh, age appropriate enrollment uh, difference for children, for older children, uh, 12, 15, and 16, uh, 12 to 6, uh, 15 years old, but not for 16 to 17 years old. Okay, for dropout rates, we didn't find significant uh, uh, difference, uh, although in 6 to 11 years old, you have a, a higher proportion for non rates. Now, for child labor, now, uh, we find no significant difference was observed in child labor, both. Uh, in terms of incidence of child labor and time spent on child labor. We also found that among children at work at least once in the past 12 months, nine or 90% of them are enrolled in school. This means that the children who are engaged in employment are also in school. This may indicate that the children engage in income generating activities to supplement the grants in order to pursue schooling. Uh, next slide. The, R the RCT cohort study uh, did not find significant uh, difference in the start of schooling for uh, for children. Next slide, please. Now, we can go to the household welfare and labor uh, outcomes, uh, second to the last group. Uh, uh, there's no significant difference for household expenditures, uh, although we find a statistical significant difference in the average total per capita income between Pantawid and non-Pantawid familia using the policy RD results, the right, uh, right, uh, and, uh, figure on the right. And uh, in terms of uh, expenditures on education per child, you see it here, it continues to have a higher expenditures, the Panta with Familia continues to have a higher expenditure per child by about 35. And, uh, and, and in addition to that, also from uh, the same as the other, uh, other evaluation, Panta with households also spend significantly more on clothing and footwear. This may be because of, this is related to uh, schooling, and we find no impact on, on vice goods like alcohol and gambling. The, the qualitative study actually uh, confirmed this result and found that most of the expenditures in are uh, on of, of, of Pantawi beneficiaries are uh, on the grant. This pertains to uh, educational expenses. Next slide, please. Now, in household income. We did, uh, in terms of household per capita income, beneficiary household is slight, has slightly higher income when grants are included, but not when it's not included by about uh, 4,500 to 6,300 in left grant. But when you take that out, it's, not, it's no longer significant. Uh, qualitative study uh, uh, says that uh, most uh, the purpose grants helps the beneficiaries in the purchase of their daily needs and schooling needs of the children. However, the grant amount needs to be adjusted given the rising price of goods. The household budget is usually not enough to cover the basic needs. These are the comments in both uh, beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries report having to adjust their spending to make it fit uh, the other uh, sources of income. Now, in terms of household welfare, we find that, uh, that there is a uh, lower hunger incidence among beneficiaries by four to six percentage points, but there's no significant difference in terms of survey to poverty derived from. Okay, and in terms of labor force participation, uh, there's no difference. Uh, what we find is, uh, as a significant difference is in terms of employment uh, by about three percentage points. Uh, this lower percentage, uh, lower employment employment rate. Uh, is found uh, among older workers, 5 to 55 to 64 years old, and in, in males and in rural areas. The lower unemployment rate of adults uh, does not necessarily mean beneficiaries are discouraged to look for work. Employment, unlike labor force participation, depends on both demand and supply, and the reduction in employment could mean the lack of jobs for the beneficiaries, as much as it could mean also a lack of uh, workers willing to 
uh, or available to accept the job. At, if you look at the other jobs uh, and work hours, you see that the the pantawid beneficiaries are are uh, have uh, more pantawid beneficiaries have other jobs uh, by about two two point three percent of points, and the compared to non beneficiaries, pantawid uh, beneficiaries work two hours more per week uh, compared to their counterparts. In terms of job seeking behavior, uh, next slide please. The, the, we didn't find a significant difference uh, in that. Uh, now, this is the qualitative study, uh, which, is, which, is, which is interesting for uh, that the qualitatives found that the, in urban areas, construction and laborers are the, the, main, the main jobs held by the breadwinners, uh, mothers, and, and caregivers are engaged in selling to supplement household income. In rural areas, farm work and construction are the main jobs held by breadwinner, and mothers and caregivers usually stay at home. Uh, for labor market outcomes, the respondents uh, uh, mentioned that the following barriers to gaining regular employment or having a regular uh, source of income. Uh, this is qualifications, usually education, age, and lack of jobs in the community, seasonality of jobs, uh, as well as lack of capital to start a business. There is also a significant difference between urban and rural areas. In urban areas, availability of capital is a top concern, followed by educational attainment. Rural areas, however, uh, the availability of jobs is the top concern, uh, followed by availability of capital. So that's thus the uh, issue of labor of the difference between urban and rural uh, areas. Now, this is the last group uh, on social behavioral outcomes. RDD estimates uh, show strong uh, effect on APS related outcomes. There's a 26% points higher. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, to 32 percentage points uh, higher attendance in Pantawid uh, parenting sessions in the past six months. Six out of ten Pantawid beneficiaries participate in voluntary community activities. Uh, Pantawid Familia promotes ownership of uh, evacuation kit by 11 percentage points. Uh, and there is also a 14 to 22 percent higher proportion of households who are officers of community organizations among Pantawid beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the uh, special result on, on, on grid. Uh, we, we find that the Pantawi children have more grit than uh, than their counterparts. More asked to help with uh, wherever in the lesson is difficult, try to finish the higher, uh, to get higher grades, start to finish schoolwork before playing or resting, uh, finish schoolwork despite lack of time and resources, and, and, and the overall grade, of course, uh, is higher. Okay, now we have two recommendations. And uh, I'll maybe just run down to this. Uh, one is the strengthening the program aspects that influence the first 1,000 days of life to promote better health among uh, women and young children. Uh, address the gaps of, in updating the changes in household composition, especially newborns and new pregnancies. Uh, next slide, please. Strengthen the monitoring of the compliance of uh, health conditions to capture better utilization of uh, levels of available services by the beneficiaries. Do an in-depth study on the puzzling impact on nutrition. We already showed that. Next slide, please. Uh, consider refocusing education intervention to older children where benefits are larger and children are more at risk of dropping out. Pursue uh, studies that will analyze the impact of, of the program on learning which we have not, have not done until now. And seven, look for solutions to reduce child labor incidence and duration. Next slide, please. Uh, identify, uh, define more clearly, measure and monitor the knowledge, attitudes and practice that APS wants beneficiaries to adapt. Number nine, take a cue from the results of the grid that the program should start studying, doing studies that uh, uh, enhance the understanding of how the program may help promote or discourage socio-emotional skills. Number 10, we should be continuous, there should be a continuous evaluation and updating of the grant amount. Next slide, please. Given the high compliance, uh, the program may want to consider updating the its program conditions and increase the number of minimum antenatal visits, reflecting the recommended and uh, ones recommended by the World Health Organization. This is actually eight. Uh, 
and now it's only three owners only required. Bolster health uh, service delivery in rural areas in terms of staffing. We have shown that facilities and equipment and uh, barriers to regular employment needs to be addressed. I think this is the last recommendation and I thank you for uh, your time. Listen.